actually, you know, our forecast for this year, uh, wait for it, was 3.2% for the year. <laughs> And the first quarter was 3.2%. And so if you ask me, geez, given the news of the first quarter, you're going to revise your forecast. You know, I have a hard time you know, thinking of why, except for maybe we would re revise it up because, you know, the number was three tenths lower because of the government shutdown. And as you've covered a lot over the years, the first quarter tends to be low because the winter weather isn't really accounted for right in the statistics. And so I think you add that all together, this is really blockbuster news and suggests that the risks on the upside are very high for GDP this year. Yeah. And uh, th so let's go through it. The market reaction was interesting, Kevin. They kind of shrugged it off. You even saw Treasury bond rate uh, yields falling a little bit on the back of this. Uh, the reason why is the boost from exports, the boost from inventories. Morgan Stanley is out there saying because those were temporary gains in the first quarter, it thinks second quarter GDP will be only 1.1%. Do you have a better explanation for what's going on there? Sure, you know, and that's kind of what everybody was saying about the first quarter, you might recall, <laughs> if you go back to the beginning of it. <laughs> and, and, and the fact is that uh, the, the inventory story is correct. You know, those guys are real pros. And when you get a lot of growth from inventories, it should give you pause about the next quarter because inventories tend to go up and down from quarter to quarter. Uh, but the fact is that incomes are growing at a very high rate and consumption has not been. And so our expectation is that the shelves are being filled, but they're going to be emptied out and production isn't going to go down the way it normally does when you see an inventory spike. And you could see that in the latest retail sales number, which really skyrocketed, right? And so I think the consumers are having their consumption catch up with income. That's going to be like the story for the next couple of quarters. Okay, sure. Let's talk about business investment for a second, because mm -hmm. last year it was blockbuster, obviously a lot of incentives in the tax bill, but it has slowed lately. And I'll quote Strategus, who's been on the correct side in terms of being more bullish on the economy, but even they are saying that business investment is slowing. Despite mm -hmm. all those incentives, trade policy is weighing on investment and resolution of a deal with China would be better sooner rather than later. What can you tell the business community? Right. Well, the fact is that in our model that gives us the 3.2 percent growth this year, investment doesn't grow as fast as it did last year because what happened is like we got to jump to a really much higher level. That's really good news. And if you can sustain that level, then you can sustain higher growth for a while. So it's like if your income went from fifty thousand dollars to one hundred thousand dollars and then you grew from one hundred to one hundred and five then you know the five wouldn't be bad news because the good news is you didn't go back to 50 right and so, and so we had a big boom in investment last year and if it had gone back down then it would have been inconsistent with our models but just sort of going up a little slower from here it's exactly what we expect because what happens is that people you know built new factories last year this year they're turning them on right uh, they're beginning to produce output in the first quarter, I think a lot of that new output from the new factories went into inventories, but I expect it will all be sold in the second yeah, and, quarter. Yeah, and look, Strategus takes all that into account. I think mm -hmm. the, the question here is, tell us what's going on with these China talks. Kevin, give oh, us sure. in the business community some insight because we're now in uh, late April, uh, if, I, if I have the right month. <laughs> but we mm -hmm. were supposed to have, you know, this deal by now. We, we don't even have details on whether when this summit might be coming between the president and China's leader. It sounds like there's progress, but then mm -hmm. we've heard bub kiss lately. So I can understand why the business community is going, all right, we, we kind of got to wait to see what's going on here. What can you tell us? Right. Well, you know, I get briefed uh, every Tuesday on the progress and there's ample progress. There are discussions about the next round of talks ongoing. There's nothing to announce on that yet. But I could say that the idea that uncertainty is pushing down capital spending in the U.S., it's actually probably, if anything, the other way. I think that if people are worried that we're going to keep our tariffs on China, then their new activity, they would be more likely to locate in the U.S. than in China right now. And so I don't think uncertainty on that's a negative. But it doesn't mean that we don't want to deal. We, we sure do. And, and, and you might have noticed that over the last few months I've been using a wedding analogy. And for the last few weeks I've been saying we're at the point where you don't want the, the groom to see the bride. But, but now I think we're at the point where you don't want Dustin Hoffman to show up at the wedding. And, and so you know, I think it's getting very close. Uh, but, you know, there's still a lot of things to work out. All right. We will take you at your word because, again, it, it, yeah. it's been a little frustrating to follow all this obviously a big deal we know a lot goes into it these are delicate talks sure. and hopefully all will turn out well um, th this then kind of brings us into the summer period Kevin that starts to point into the fall where the debt mm -hmm. ceiling looms and with so many other issues it's starting to get more focused today the Washington Post is writing about it saying mm -hmm. the White House is trying to avoid having all of these things kind of come to a head and hurt the economy what's the plan for dealing with the debt ceiling well, I think that in the president's budget, you know, we actually are trying to get ahead of the curve on spending, and that's the position that we're going to take into the fall. Uh, that I think our budget is a good guideline to, you know, what our what our belief is the right thing to do. Uh, the fact is that we came in. There are a lot of problems that had to be fixed, like, uh, you know, a defense uh, the, a defense that was 
sort of under under tooled that you, you saw like airplanes getting hit by hurricanes because they didn't have enough parts and so on. So we had to spend more money on defense. We had to fix the tax system. But now I think getting ahead of the curve out of the deficit is a high priority for us. And that's why the president's called for 5% five per, five across the board spending cuts uh, for cabinet agencies. And I, I think that, you know, you're right to look ahead to that and say that it's probably something that's going to be a focus of a lot of debate in the fall and, and, and probably uh, at times uncertainty. So who do we have to look for for compromise on this? Nancy Pelosi? I mean, what, you know, 5% spending cuts might sound good to the president, but not to, to the Congress. Well, I'm not a negotiator, but I could say that if we could get ahead of the curve on spending and reduce the deficit, Deficit, that given where we are, given this strong economy, it's a good time to do that, uh, and it would be very good for the long-run outlook. Kevin, finally, I, I mm -hmm. want to go back to the GDP number and ask if there's a way you guys have quantified the impact of deregulation, for example, um, on the economy. So we know mm -hmm. a lot of the things going on behind the scenes, everything from pipeline permitting processes to other uh, things happening, certainly that aren't in the headlines every day, could be contributing to the better growth rates that we've seen lately. Do you have a way to quantify that and to you, tell us how sustainable it is? You know, it's funny you should ask that because as a teaser, it's one of the things that we've been working on as a paper that's going to document and quantify all the gains from deregulation. And it's, you know, coming soon to a White House near you.